What's up guys? In today's video, we are gonna talk about some texting. I have a handy dandy list here. Today we're gonna to talk about how to get a girl's number, when to text her, what happens in the beginning of when you text her, and uh, a couple of tricks. Ready? Let's do it. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about is how to get a girl's number. When you are meeting a girl in person and you've talked to her for more than a few minutes, just ask. There's gonna be times when you don't know if the girl likes you and she actually does. And there's gonna be times when you think that the girl likes you and she doesn't. You're not gonna know. So the only way to know is to ask. So ask for the girl's number. When you ask her for her number, all you have to say is, it's pretty easy, you say, uh, uh, hey, I gotta get out of here. Uh, let me get your number, maybe I'll text you. And then you pull out your phone and you hold your phone and you put her number in and you text it. And you text her right then and there. You text her uh, your name. And then you say like, you know, Jake, the hot guy from whatever, right? That is going to keep you uh, from getting a who is this text? The dreaded who is this? Who is this? You are nobody, who is this? That's the worst text to get. And if you text her right away with your name, right? To her phone number, you can also check. You can say like, Oh, yo, did you get uh, did you get it? I just texted you right now. She'll say, yeah. And then you say, cool. And now you know that your number is in her phone. She gave you the correct number and she now has your name in her phone. So there's no who is this. Make sense? Good. Okay, uh, next thing is when do you send her the first text? You want to send a girl the first text when... Uh, between one and three days after you get her number. So in other words, if you get the girl's number on Friday night, you wanna text her either Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Easy enough? Now, do you do it on day one, day two, or day three? Well, first of all, we don't do it on day four, because if we do it on day four, then um, it's you've, you're experiencing like some disconnection. Four days without talking to somebody when you first meet him is too long and you don't want her to feel a disconnected vibe. So you have to do it on day one, day two, or day three. Make sense? Now, which day you text a girl depends on two factors. Number one, how eager you might appear by texting the girl on that day. In other words, if you text a girl on the first day, like right after you meet her, it's like Friday night and you get her number and then Saturday morning you're like, boom, I'm texting you, you're the best, right? Uh, that could look very eager, right? If you text the girl 30 days later, which I don't recommend, then that would obviously not look very eager. Now, eagerness is not necessarily bad. Again, eagerness is not necessarily bad. So the second factor is how you believe the girl will interpret that eagerness, right? So in other words, if you meet a girl and you guys have an amazing connection, you guys lock eyes, everything's amazing, right when you first meet her, you take her number, and the next day you text her, right? That girl, although that text could be uh, interpreted as maybe an eager uh, text, that girl is really going to probably interpret that as, wow, this is so cool. I met a guy, we have a great connection, and this guy's not playing games. He just texted me right away. How refreshing, right? But if you meet a girl and she maybe doesn't, you don't know if she likes you as much, and you're like, man, I don't know. And then you text this girl right away, she might interpret that eagerness as neediness. So again, how eager could you appear and how might she interpret that eagerness? Uh, texting a first day could be day great. If you um, want to back off because you think you might have come on a little too strong, text her on the third day. And if you just don't know, text her on the second day. Got it? All right, moving on. Uh, you've texted her the first time. We'll talk uh, later on or in a different video about what to text. Today, I just want to go over some basics. In the beginning of texting this girl, you are gonna text her more texts than she texts you, and those texts are gonna be quite a bit longer than her texts. This is because you are investing more in her in the beginning until she has an idea of if she likes you. Once this girl starts liking you, you'll notice that your texts and her texts start to be about the same length and about the same frequency. And then as the girl starts liking you more, you can back off a little bit. She's gonna uh, transition into texting you more and texting you longer texts. So if I take your phone and I scroll through the texts and I see that your texts 
no matter like forever with this girl have been longer and more frequent i know that she's in the position of power in your relationship the position of dominance you want her more than she wants you simply because the length of your texts is longer right and your texts are more frequent than hers i call this rule the texting length and investment rule in other words if you are having longer texts, you are investing more in the other person. You are essentially chasing that other person. So that's a good thing to, a good, uh, you know, troubleshooting tool if you want to look back through your texts with girls and see if you were in the submissive position of chasing or if you were in the dominant position of being chased. Now, again, you are going to tra uh, like transition in the middle of texting this girl from being the guy who texts a lot to being the guy who doesn't text as much. How do you do that? How do you get to a place where you're not texting as much and the girl is the one texting you a lot? Well, you have to transition. One way that I like to transition and at the same time test how much a girl likes me is by purposefully ending a conversational thread, okay? So let's say you're texting and the girl says something and instead of like asking her a question to continue the conversation, you might just say, cool, or yep, or thumbs up, right? Now the conversation she'll feel is kind of over. You have texted last also, so she feels like it's her turn to text you. So the conversation's over. She knows it's her turn to text you. What's she going to do? Well, if she really wants to continue the conversation, um, she might feel already that the burden of conversation is, uh, you know, to continue the conversation is on her. So she'll have to introduce a new conversational topic, right? So I've purposefully ended the, excuse me, I've purposefully ended the conversation and she's starting it up again. Women don't like to do this. And so when they do do it, it is a obvious signal that this girl wants to continue talking with you, is really interested, really likes you, etc. Okay, this is a great way to transition from you being the one who texts to her being the one who texts. Hooray, now you're cool. Got it? <laughs> All right, so what else uh, What else can we talk about? So the texting length and investment rule we've gone over. We talked about uh, in the beginning who texts more and it's you. And we talked about how to one trick to transition. Now, um, let's talk about asking a girl on the date, okay? Once you have texted a girl a little bit back and forth, uh, I don't know, maybe five or 10 texts a piece, your texting is gonna be kind of a mini mm, interaction. Like you have your first interaction with a girl, you kind of gotta get the girl attracted, you gotta start the conversation, get her attracted, and you gotta ask her for the number, right? Same thing's gonna happen when you are asking a girl out via text. You're gonna text her, you have to open the conversation somehow, then you have to kind of do a little bit of mini attracting of the girl, remind her that you're funny and cute and amazing and all this shit, right? And then you are going to ask her out. When you ask her out, it's really important that you don't confuse yourself. This is what a lot of guys do. They confuse themselves. They ask, you know, something like, okay, how about let's go out Thursday night at eight o'clock, right? Well, if the girl says no, you're now in a position where you don't know if that no means she doesn't want to go out with you, or if that no means I'm not available Thursday night at fucking eight o'clock. Now you've dug yourself in an idiot hole. You're an idiot and you're in the idiot hole. Now what do you do, idiot? It's really tough, right? So to prevent this, what we'd like to, and to also give us ourselves a clear idea of whether or not this girl wants to go out with us, what I like to do is I like to say, so hey, what's your schedule like? You know, I was thinking we could go to, I was, I, I've been wanting to go to this one place, name the place so she can look it up and shit. I've been wanting to go to this one place. Uh, um, I was thinking you could come along, you know, what's your schedule like uh, uh, coming up here? Now, if you get a blanket no, which is like, oh, I'm just really busy with no explanation, that girl, you got some more work to do. Now you are texting her so you can still say to your head, okay, I need to get this girl a little more attracted. She's not ready to go out with me yet. Right? So I would go back and I would start saying more attractive things, right? We'll talk about those in a different video. For now, um, you have to know that you need to do more work. Fair? All right. So uh, if the girl is attracted to you, but she cannot go for whatever reason, usually what you'll do is you'll get 
a couple of other indicators that the girl's still interested. One of them would be if the girl says, no, I really want to go, I just can't, right? Or if the girl gives you a detailed, some, some type of a detail that she wouldn't otherwise offer as to why she can't, like she says, oh, I have a really big test coming up this week and I have to study like four days in a row, it's really important, right? And she tells you what the name of the test is or what class it is. But girls, when people lie, they generally give just bland no's, oh, I gotta wash my hair, or, you know, the dog ate my homework. They're gonna give you some terrible excuse that's really obviously see-through. But if they give you a detail as to why they can't, or they tell you, I really do want to go. Or the third thing is if they offer another date, ah, I can't this, I can't uh, coming up for the next few days, but what about like, you know, I know it's like five or six days away, but what about like next Thursday, right? Then a girl is really trying to indicate to you that she wants to go, but she just can't. Now, if you remember back to how many days we wait to text the girl, um, I told you that four days was too long of a time to be disconnected. It makes a girl feel disconnected. So if it is, let's say it's a Monday and the girl wants to schedule a date for Friday, you should not do it. Again, if it's Monday and the girl wants to schedule for Friday, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's four days. It's too much. Then what you're going to put yourself, if she say yes, in a position where you're like, well, shoot, do I text this girl again on Wednesday and say like, hey, how's it going? It's like weird. What do you say? You know, or, or if you don't text at all, then the girl feels disconnected. So what I would recommend instead of saying yes, I would recommend that you say something to the effect of, oh man, my, my weekend's busy. I already have one plan that I have to finalize um, with some friends. So I don't know if I can do it on a Friday, but let me get back to you. Um, let me get back to you on that, right? What that does is it puts the girl in a state of tension. She doesn't know if she gets a date with you and, and she gets to like wonder and wish and hope and talk with her friends and go, oh my gosh, am I gonna go out with this guy? I don't know. That tension is like really gonna do some work for you while you're not there, right? Then you can text her on Wednesday and you can be like, hey, so Friday's cool with me. Um, I actually scheduled for Saturday with my friends. So Friday's super cool. You down for that? And she's gonna say, yes. All right, cool. That's how you get your date. Fair enough? Yay, you got yourself a date. Good job. All right, uh, what else? Uh, so when you go on your date, this will be the last thing we talk about today. So when you go on your date, what are you gonna text this girl? Well, what I don't like to do, don't do this. Do not, uh, well, let's just talk. I'm not going to give you advice. You do whatever you want. But what I did that didn't work <laughs> is I would text a girl like, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning on the Friday that I was going to go on a date. And I'd be like, hey, is the date still on tonight? Well, what I was unknowingly doing is giving the girl an easy out. I gave the girl an easy opportunity with plenty of advance notice to say like, no, I don't want to go on this date with you. So if I do that and I give this girl plenty of advance notice, she doesn't feel guilty about breaking the date. She doesn't feel bad about anything. She just breaks the date. Now it's bad. She just, you know, girls get cold feet all the time for a million reasons, you know, like a pimple or like my shirt has a stain on it or I don't feel right today, you know, all kinds of weird stuff. So, um, I would recommend that you don't text the girl at 11 o'clock. Instead, what I like to do is, if our dates, let's say our date's at eight o'clock, I like to text the girl like 5.30. And I like to have already left the house, right? So that I'm running a couple errands, I've already left the house. Now she feels like, well, he's already ready for the date. He's already put the effort in. Like, I can't just ditch him now. I kind of have to go, right? And I. You know, obviously you don't want the girl to like have to go on the date with you, but when it comes to girls making decisions and being non-committal about a first date, this little extra nudge can really help, right? So what I'll do is I'll say, I'll text and I'll say, uh, hey, just left the house. Uh, I'll see you at, uh, I, I'm running a couple er errands. I'll see you at eight, you know, pretty easy. Hey, just left the house, run a few errands, excited to see you at eight, exclamation. Easy enough. Now she knows, you know it's the date day. You're going to the date at eight o'clock and you've already left the house. You're gonna meet her there. You're already, you're already coming. It's already happening. You're already doing it. Uh, I found out that this, for me, uh, made the percentage of dates that I got go up a lot and uh, the percentage of flakes go down. So uh, I think without further ado, that's our video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the information. Go text girls. <laughs> I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later.